Tapping practices are one of the main factors that influence the total yields from individual trees in the current season. And because they also impact the amount of non-conductive wood present in the tapping zone, they can also impact the total yields achievable in the future. So it's important to choose practices that balance both yields and non-conductive wood accumulation so that both yields and sustainability can be optimized over the long term. The tapping practice with perhaps the largest impact on yields is tap hold depth. Yields generally increase with increasing tapping depth, but gains are typically minimal with depths greater than two inches. Spout diameter can also impact yields. For example, quarter inch tapples produce about 10% less than 5 16 inch tapples. And of course, the number of taps per tree can impact yields. For trees large enough to support multiple taps, total yields increase with additional taps, but they don't double. Any amount of additional sap is gonna depend on tree size and vacuum level. Higher levels of vacuum and smaller tree size will reduce the gains of additional taps. But in addition to impacting yields, these tapping practices also impact how much non-conductive wood is added to the tapping zone each year. And because of that, they also impact future yields. Here's how. The amount of non-conductive wood made by tapping is proportional to the size of the tap hole. Bigger holes mean bigger internal wounds. So while deeper, wider tap holes and more tap holes per tree will result in higher yields, they'll also generate more non-conductive wood. The greater the amount of non-conductive wood in the tapping zone, the greater the chances are of hitting it when tapping. So for example, if 20% of the tapping zone is non-conductive wood, there's a 20% chance of drilling into it when tapping. So if non-conductive wood accumulates to high levels over time, the chances of hitting it increase. This is critical because tap holes drilled into non-conductive wood yield significantly less sap. So this is how greater amounts of non-conductive wood from tapping practices used to maximize yields today can potentially reduce the sap yields of the future. So how do we optimize both yields and sustainability over the long term? This begins with practices which maximize the growth and health of trees. Because the proportion of conductive wood in the tapping zone is strongly influenced by radial growth rates, any practices to encourage vigorous growth and health, like thinning and soil amendments like liming if they're needed, are the foundation for tapping that optimizes yields and sustainability. And it's also important to note just how much non-conductive wood from previous tapping is already present in trees. This can be assessed by looking at wood chips when you're tapping and keeping track of how often you hit brown, non-conductive wood. Next, because the proportion of non-conductive wood in the tapping zone depends on the total size of the tapping zone, any practices to increase its effective size can also reduce the chances of hitting non-conductive wood. Practices like increasing the length of drop lines, moving the lateral line system vertically, and tapping below the lateral line all increase the effective size of the tapping zone and reduce the chances of hitting non-conductive wood. Finally, choose and adjust the basic tapping practices like tapping depth, spout diameter, and the number of taps per tree to meet the conditions of your trees in site. The idea is to aim for practices that will result in the maximum yields possible that will still support the availability of sufficient conductive wood in the future. So for example, in a situation where trees are slow growing and non-conductive wood is hit pretty frequently, so more than about 5% of the time, first, implement the practices which don't impact current year yields. So consider thinning and practices that increase the effective size of the tapping zone, like longer drop lines and tapping below the lateral. Then over time, as growth rates increase and non-conductive wood is hit less frequently, Tapping practices which result in higher yields, like deeper tap holes, can be implemented. On the other hand, in a situation where, from the start, trees are healthy with good growth rates and non-conductive wood is hit less than about 5% of the time, practices like deeper tapping depths and multiple taps in trees of the appropriate diameter could be used from the start. If non-conductive wood begins to be hit more frequently over time, then practices should be adjusted. 
The choice of tapping practices should be an ongoing, continuous process and be frequently assessed and adjusted in response to conditions as they change over time. In this way, both yields and sustainability can be maximized over the long term.